Hello, Covenant Eyes, and welcome back to the Covenant Eyes podcast. I'm one of your hosts today, Brandon Clark, joined by... Karen Potter. Hey, everybody. So glad to be back. We are on location. Like, we are in Louisiana, and we have got (laughs) a... way in Louisiana. Way in Louisiana. (laughs) Yeah, our drive down, I was like, this is where I need to be. (laughs) Removed from everything. But we are down here to talk with Phil and Kay about their upcoming movie, and I would love to just dive right in. How are you guys doing today? Great. Doing doing great. Well, we're great. We're grateful to have you guys joining us on the podcast and we have a lot to talk about. So Brandon, I know you want to make some introductions about why we're here and what we're going to be talking about. Yeah. So the movie is coming out the blind uh, in September, late September. So when this podcast drops, it'll be about a week, week and a half before the movie comes out. And one of the things that we have done in our time at, at Covenant Eyes is work together with you guys, uh, specifically with the Unashamed podcast. And, um, you know, what we found is that our missions align so well, right? We want to lead others to, to Christ. We know that freedom comes through Him and Him alone. And yet, we also know that there's a struggle and there's a journey. And so, we've really been able to connect on those points. And now when we talk about the movie coming out and we get more of the background of what you struggled with and how you guys had to fight for your marriage, Karen and I both looked at each other and we thought, wow, so many people, no matter what they're struggling with, whether it's alcoholism or pornography and what we deal with, can relate to the struggles that they face. And so, we're just so grateful to be able to have this conversation to not only talk about and promote the movie and encourage our our listeners to go see the movie and support it, but also just to talk about, you know, kind of the realness of, of the struggles that we face and how Christ brings us that freedom. Absolutely. Well, uh, would you guys like to tell us just a little bit about how you guys made the movie? What brought you to the place where you decided that it was time to share your stories? Well, I've always said my uh, they should make a movie about our family. <laughs> and it was many years ago when we were not famous. Not, nobody knew who we were. But I just thought, I just felt like we had a story to tell. And we were just unusual in that way. And I, I wished... And never dreamed that this day would come and you would be asking us about our movie. Mm-hmm. That's really real and there. Um, I'm thrilled. And it shows you that God can do anything. So when you think about something, you think this will never happen. Don't say that. So true. And my my little sister, <clears throat> Janice Ellen, I all named her. I had two two sisters, females. They passed on and gone to the other side. Now, Cy and I are the only ones that are left out of the Robertson group. Five boys. Yep. There so, were five boys in his family. Yep. So this thing came along. If someone had told me I would go from just a drunken heathen, the reason I think I was a drunken heathen is I, I never heard the gospel hmm. preached. I mean, it, it would, maybe they, maybe somebody, would, when I was young, was somewhere I would have understood it. But uh, it was 28 before I finally just living a life of sin for about roughly a decade. So I, I said, when I heard that God had sent Jesus to planet Earth, we're counting time by him. And just think about it. He's the individual that the world. I had somebody get a hold of that, that woman that knows everything on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? Some, something. Siri. Siri. Uh, Siri. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she knows everything. I said, well, I wanted, you, I wanted to know. I, I told Dan, the eunuch, he works for me. I said, Dan, call her up and ask her what year is it in China. Well, he did, and she <laughs> said what year it was, and I said, "Well, I said, what about what about uh, you know Russia? What 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 year they say it is?" It ended up, the world counts time by Jesus Christ. Just think about it. Hmm. All the years before him are called all the years before him, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and all the years after him, A.D. Anno Domini. So I started right there when I, when this guy was t- showing me the gospel, 
said, yeah, he came down. The reason he came down and the world counts time by him, he died for their sins, mm -hmm. was buried, and was resurrected from the dead. Mm -hmm. And I zeroed in on that resurrection part, and I'm thinking, when I heard it, I was 28, living a life of sin. I said, wait just a minute here. I said, these people are talking about, I said, I'm reading about getting out of here, being raised from the dead. I said, it sounds too good to be true. Hmm. You mean all the mistakes I made, I've made, and it's a lot of them, all of them not counted against me if I come to Jesus. The guy who studied with me said, you got it. I said, that's pretty good. Hmm. I said, hmm. So that was the starting point, being shocked. I said, it sounds too good to be true. And the guy I was, that was studying with me said, it probably is too good for us, but it is true. There's a way out of here, and Jesus is the way. So I said, to tell you what, let me get home to make sure you're not trying to slick me somehow or another. And I'll go over these verses by myself. I said, sounds too good to be true. So I go through the gospel and looking at it, what Jesus said, what he did, where he is now, motive. He's there 24-7, not counting our sins against us. I'm like, I need that. I need that a lot. <laughs> so I call him up after a few days. I said, you know what? I can't get around it. I, I, I've never heard anything like that. So the gospel. So watch. Here's 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade men. That's exactly what I've been doing hmm. since I was 28, and I heard the, the truth. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We're not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity, Paul to the Corinthians here, we're giving you an opportunity to take pride in us. They were preaching the gospel. So that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than in what is in the heart. If we're out of our mind, it's for the sake of God. If we're in our right mind, it's for you, you Corinthians. And all these years later for us. For Christ's love compels us. Because we're all convinced that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Mm. Mm. When I was 28, I saw that. I said, hmm. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. We love them all. We share Jesus with them. We pray for them, and we move on and tell some more. Though we once regarded Christ in that way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. And was it a changer, life changer for me? All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, mm -hmm. bringing us all together. So I've been active in that for the last 50 years nearly. God was reconciling the world to himself through Christ, not counting men's sin against them. You say, what a better world it would be for all of us. God not counting his sins against us. The blood of Jesus removed them. And he's committed to us the message of reconciliation. I didn't realize it, but after I became a little stronger in the faith, I understood. I said, man, this is a powerful thing. We're there for, listen to this, Christ's ambassadors. I'm a redneck down here in Louisiana, you say, but I'm an ambassador for Jesus. So what do you think? Yeah, they're all going, good. I wonder what he's up to. So good. As though God was making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him, Jesus Christ, who had no sin, mm. to be sin for us 
so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You're like, mm. Boy, what a text. That's 2 Corinthians, if you have your Bible, chapter 5, and it's a doozy, and that really helped me a lot. What happened was my little sister said, if you convert him, my brother, if you convert him, he'll convert thousands. Mm. And that was at the time Phil was who, his worst yeah, wow. living. Wow. And the guy who was studied with me said, you, you think? And she said, there's <laughs> just something about him. I'm just she telling knew. you right now. She did. And he'll reach thousands. And that's exactly what happened. Amen. And nobody believed her and thought she was just... You know, just love Phil and wanted to say that. They were looking at me like that drunken. <laughs> <laughs> and and she knew. She had enough faith to know that he could change him and be what he is now. And I'm going to tell you, all of the rest of us, myself included, was like, ooh, I hope that could come true. But to say that like she did, as if she knew it. Wow. Not that she warned it. She knew it. She and that's was a good she sister did. in the Lord. Right. Right. Godly woman. Godly, mm -hmm. godly woman. You were talking about the common ordinariness of the apostles and how you guys, especially a lot of people know you guys through Duck Dynasty. Yep. That showed on A and E for several years and how you were able to reach common, ordinary folk who were watching TV, who maybe liked hunting, uh, maybe they just loved the outdoors, and yet you were able to sprinkle in messages of the gospel to these common, ordinary folk all the way along. And so it's amazing to see what the Lord has done since you were 28, being able to come to now and reach so many people with the gospel message. Yeah, a and H told me one time, they said, I said, let me make a guess. I said, for y'all to deal with a bunch like us, I said, just ordinary people. And... I said, it kind of went, somebody in the back at A&E &E said, you know, why don't we try a functional family? We've, we've, got, all these, <laughs> we've got all these unfunctional families there going around. Why don't we want that as well as functional? They said, <clears throat> where would we find one, Bob? They said, where would you find a functional family? They said, we think we may have a bunch that's functioning with the fear of God and the love of Jesus in them. They look so, different. So they, that's, that's where yes. it got started. I think that's what made the show so attractive is that you guys were a functioning, God-fearing family. And so many people are hungry for that. You know, they're like, well, my life's a mess. And, you know, they look to you guys as... They would always say, we feel like we can relate to your family. Mm -hmm. We feel like you're regular people. You know, they didn't see somebody that was trying to be somebody they were not. Because right. we were just ourselves the whole time. And they would meet us to do an interview separate and say, you're, you're just like you are on the show. Mm. And I was like, I, why would you think we wouldn't be like we were on the show? And they said, you don't know how many other people. We see them on the show, mm -hmm. and then we meet them, and they're not like they were on the show at all. So, Miss Kay, I'd like to know, I've heard your story before, talking to it, why in the world would you end up picking a guy like me to marry? <laughs> Great question. I wondered that before. <laughs> well, I, I did wonder that. But um, I told him, I guess it was love at first sight with me, with him. Mm -hmm. And um, he just had a lot of qualities that I liked. And it was really funny because it, when I was 14, I lost my dad. He died at 49 with a heart attack. And one of his things, like Phil, they were, he was a big hunter and a fisherman, and that he loved outdoors, had bird dogs and things like that. And I loved all that about him. And most guys I knew didn't do that at all till I ran up on him. And, um, you know, I was just taken away that he did hunt and fish. And, you know, he even, the first time we dated in uh, freshman year in high school, we had to break up during hunting season because he said <laughs> that he wouldn't want anything to interfere with his hunting so that we could go back together after hunting season. But it, it was that important to him that he just couldn't 
go on dates and yeah, when I got <laughs> too tired and all when that. I, when I decided I had a football scholarship, you know, I played with Terry Bradshaw. Everybody knows him. Mm -hmm. He was second string to me. So I thought, hey, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Good. But when we took off, for me to go to college, I told Miss Kay, I said, let's see now, Miss Kay, you're a junior in high school. I'm a senior. I'm graduating. I guess it's adios, amigos. Mm -hmm. I said, because I'm going to college, football scholarship. Yeah. Finance my education. And she said, wait a minute, Buster. Uh, here's the deal. <laughs> she said, the deal is I'm going with you. Oh, my gosh. Over here. I said, you better tell your mama. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'll talk to her. So yeah. that's how she just said. It started out very young, but yeah. I want to tell you mm -hmm. something. It was, it was just my decision. Of course, uh, like I say, my dad had passed away. My mother and I were dating at the same time, which was very unusual. But... Uh, you know, I knew that since she had plans to go places, I didn't know where she was going to wind up even being. Mm. So uh, to me, it was just the natural. We were going to get married anyway <laughs> to just start it earlier than we thought we would. Yeah, the movie is showing primarily the the wicked side of me up and up, but it does catch my conversion mm -hmm. to Jesus. So... And then just showed that we were happy family now. Here we we're, we're so that's the section that they were they they were showing my bad days, <laughs> right. but, but yeah. there are good days once now. Yeah. But and we're living proof of it. So absolutely. But it did take a while because when you live on the side of the devil, and it, it you didn't immediately know how to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. You know it that from what yep. you've seen yep. from people. Yeah. Right. And you come to Christ and he's in you, but you have to learn how to behave in a whole different manner. And that's why my little boys, when Phil first became a Christian, they said, well, Mama, if we take Daddy to church, he might say a cuss word. What are we going to do <laughs> if he does that? And I said, well, we'll, excuse, we'll t say we're sorry he did that. <laughs> he's learning. That's right. I, I, want our listener, person. I want our listeners to understand here today that it takes a little time mm -hmm. to to live the fruit of the spirit mm. is love loving it's pretty tough for people to love each other because all you have to do is look at our culture and mm -hmm. say that they're, they're not happy and they fight or they mean to each other right. love joy fruit of the spirit love joy peace patience Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, generous, generosity, whatever. It's just a tough thing to learn how instantaneous people need Especially to realize. Especially when they came from your life. Yeah. It had been so far on the other side because Phil would say, this man at church just come up and put his arm around me. I didn't know what to do. And I was like, he's just welcoming you. Yes. He loves you. And Phil would say, well, I never had a man do like that. Well, I was just saying, that's a little lovey-dovey for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it's really look. important, though, because a lot yeah. of new Christians, you know, they come into church, and as Christians, we need to be, embrace that, like have some grace for our fellow man and, that's and right. women. You show, right? You don't care yeah. what they've been doing. Right. They're a changed person now, but a lot of people have trouble with that. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing. He told us, uh, and, and we should know this as a church, you're made to love who walks in that door, regardless of how they look or how they mm. act. That's and you'll right. know my disciples by their love for one another. That's what he tells us. And if you don't welcome people, and I've talked to a lot mm. of people about that, because they'll be scared. There was a lady that came in our <laughs> church one time, and she had, she had so many tattoos you couldn't see her real skin. And she looked rough. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And. I didn't see her at first, Phil saw her. And he said, okay, you need to go talk to that lady. And, of course, I looked at her, and I was like, ooh, she's about the scariest lady I've ever seen in my life. So Phil said, you know, you need to go talk to her. So I was getting up to go, and I worked with a little group of girls, and they were kind of, we were learning together. But I guess you'd say I was kind of the head of them, but I wasn't like the main teacher. Mm -hmm. I was just leading a small group of girls so we could learn the Bible better. Yeah. And one of my girls in my group, <laughs> I looked, and she was there before I could get over there. 
hugging that girl, mm. talking to her. She said, when I got there, she said, I've invited her to go to lunch with me. Aww. And then she's coming over at my house and all that. And I was so shocked and I was so thrilled that she didn't see anything but somebody that needed reaching out to. That's and amazing. she was a scary wow. lady. Mm. I'd like to talk a little bit about the movie. Now, obviously, we're not going to give away uh, a lot of the details or anything like that. But spoiler alert, they remain together. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, one of the things that, that we see when we work with people who are struggling with pornography is just the damage that it causes, even on a familial level and especially on a marital level. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that the movie showcases really well is the damage, even though it was you who was doing the drinking, it damaged so many other things that is correct. in your life. Kay, I'd, I'd just love to hear from your perspective of those times and how you were able to, mm. one, keep it together, but then also when you knew that it was time to actually leave and let Phil have well, to figure it out. Phil made that easy for me, but I'll tell you, all the times that I was waiting, I mean, there was many nights, I told Phil this, he knows it now, but that I would just literally set out on our outside steps waiting for him to come home, and I would sit there till daylight in the morning, mm. And he never came home. Mm. And then I had to go in. I missed a whole night's sleep, get my children ready for school, and go to work myself and do all that. And I wouldn't be able to count how many times I did that, not knowing where he was, if he's coming home, what's going to happen. If he's with somebody else, That was that's what happens. Because when you're on the devil's side, I mean, you're going. Nothing should shock you that they do. Right. Not one thing. I mean, I knew he drank. I knew he ran around. I knew he lied. I knew all that was going on because that's the dark side. That's what happens when you're in Satan's court. You're you're on the dark side, and that's what you do. And I knew he was doing that. Okay, my choice was: Do I have patience and wait on God to change him, praying that he would? Or do I leave? Because so many, I got to one point when everybody wanted me to leave. I mean, they were just even mad at me for not leaving. But I just, I guess I believed in what Phil's sister said and thought, but what if he does change? And God can change him. But nothing he was doing showed me he was fixing to change. But it was where you really have to have faith on that. And that's what I guess I just stuck with the patience and the faith. And then you say, well, you were, you know, about leaving him. I didn't have to worry about leaving him because guess what he did one night? He came in drunk as Cooter Brown, you know, and he said, you know what? You and this family, I mean, you're just getting on my nerves. Now, he told me that. Oh my goodness. And I just looked like. Well, he's really drunk now because mm. he don't even know what he's saying. Right. And, of course, and you wonder why it's embarrassing to watch <laughs> your past. Well, you mm. said there was my little boys there looking like, Daddy just said that about us, you know. Mm. And he said, I need y'all to just pack your stuff and leave. So he put us out. Mm. Wow. And literally, we had a Volkswagen. So we could sure not take much stuff, could we? Mm. And four boys in a Volkswagen. And, uh, well, we took what we could, and we knew, you know, and I thought to the boys, I had to tell them, he's drunk right now. You know that. I mean, he's that's the himself. part you see in the movie right there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And we literally were put out of the house. I'm and we went to his brother, and I asked, could we stay the night? And he, it was really, I, you'll understand this if you just knew, because Phil, one of the things he did when he was really drunk was he would get madder and madder and usually wind up fighting and all. So my bro his brother said we could stay the night, but he couldn't let us stay with him because he was literally scared of his brother, mm -hmm. Phil, because he might be drunk and come over there and whip Harold, you know, whip him because he's letting us stay at his house. So I told him, I said, that's fine. We want one night and then we're going to West Monroe. We lived outside of West Monroe then. And I said, the church there, which is the church we go to this day, has promised they'll help us find a place. And they helped us find a place based on your income. My income was about $250 a month, what I made at my job. 
So we we had very little to pay for rent, mm -hmm. and we were able to stay there with the help of the church. Listen and to this. He and finally this. found us. We didn't tell him where we were at. Mm. That was something. And wow. then what helped me out, and it helped all of the very listeners here. I'm in Hebrews chapter ten. Watch day after day under the system of law, every priest stands and performs his religious duties again and again. He offers the same sacrifices, animals, <laughs> which can never take away sins. But when this priest, Jesus, had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. That's Acts chapter 1, him leaving, going back into heaven. Since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. Check this out. Because by one sacrifice, his death on a cross, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Mm. Mm. Amen. So once you come to Jesus and you say, no matter your mistakes, they're not counted against you, get up, get up, keep going, keep following him, keep following him. He's there to take away all your sins. You're perfect in his eyes. Because he, by one sacrifice, he has made perfect mm. for ever, even those forever, those who are being made holy. So holiness, it, it's, a, it's an ongoing thing the rest of our lives on the earth. We all make mistakes, but the blood of Jesus is there to remove them. So to your listeners, if you want to live a life where there is hope, yes, he's the way to go. Amen. He really is. Amen. I think the thing that really touched my heart when watching your story is that so many of our listeners and so many of us have personally experienced the heartbreaking pain and agony of our sin and our choices. That's why we did the movie. Yes. Yeah. And this movie is inspirational because look where you are today and look what God has done for you. You say, well, you're an old jerk. I said, <laughs> I used to be. <laughs> I said, leave your woman sitting on the porch, you know, and you're taking eyes. I look at it now. I'm like, what kind of boo? Well, and, and for me, I'm trying to teach the ladies that to have patience. Because mm. so many of them just maybe on the first time you have something really bad happen, they're ready to throw in the whole marriage. Yeah. And see, look, if I'd have done that. Which happens a lot in America. Too right. much. Right. Too much. I was just going to mention, my wife watched the screening with me. And as she was watching the movie, she said she knew the look in the eye of the, of the actress, of what that was like, of watching just destruction. But she said she also knew in her heart what was meant when she said, but I just know deep down that it's going to work out. So can you, can you just speak to the wives that may be going through, whether it's pornography or alcoholism or whatever, obviously we're not going to condone domestic violence or, or anything like that if there's dangerous situations like that, but, but what message would you have for the wives who are listening who are maybe in a tough situation? Well, I call it fighting for your marriage. And I heard that from my grandmother when I was a girl, when she used to give me advice. And one of them was, when you marry, it's for life. I mean, she said, you won't ever use the D word, which was divorce. Mm -hmm. She said, because you will stay married and you'll fight for that marriage because it's a battle against God and Satan, your marriage is. And so you will either fight or you won't and give it up to Satan. And I remember saying right then, well, I'm not going to do that, but I don't think I'll have problems because as a child, we don't really see that mm -hmm. but uh as i grew up and i saw everything she said come to life and i thought she said stay she said have patience she said believe that god can change him and i mean i felt like i was standing alone mm -hmm. but i stood and my boys would even say i appreciate that miss k thank you yes. and you you know they would say well, Mama, maybe if we go, Daddy will, Daddy will be so sad. And, you know, and finally when he did put us out is exactly what happened after a few days or weeks. I don't remember how long it you was. Know, by the way, while she's on an excellent point there, all four of my sons 
a daughter that came, I, she was mine. She didn't know it for 45 years. Wow. Mm. Gets in touch with me. We swap of, you know, you'd look at your blood and all that. Yeah. I said, well, good. Well, come on aboard. <laughs> so she lives right up, right up here, right up beside Next me. Next door to us. I gave her a house. Oh. I said, there's your house. I said, I'm glad to meet you. I said, I've been kind of been a while. I mean, 45 years, 40-something oh. years. I didn't even know who she was. And I knew. She just come out of, the, was probably out out of my, that, 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 that life spree of yes. mine, you know. Yeah. But so, but all of them, every last one of them, from Alan, the oldest, all the way down, Jace, Willie, Jephthah, their wife, everybody is, is a Christian. Mm. Everybody follows Jesus out of the whole bunch. Oh. There's been no divorces. And so they can't mm. tell me this won't work. That's right. Just following Jesus and being mm. faithful to him. Oh, it'll work. Yep. Because I saw it work. Uh, my youngest son, Jep, uh, came in way after Phil had done that. So when we were talking about a story mm. about when he was in the bad world, uh, Jep said, that's not my daddy. did <laughs> not do that. Because I know my daddy, and he would never do that. And he had the hardest time. And I said, that was your daddy when he wasn't saved, mm -hmm. when he wasn't a Christian. And Jet would say, he would never do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just couldn't believe that the man he knew, his dad, was the man that was yeah. that way. Well, I just want to talk about that as, as a father, Phil. You, know, you had those the, the three boys at, at the time that you were going through that, and you often were just, it seemed like, off doing your own thing, just this, caught in your own world and boys running trucks in the trees yeah, running trucks mm -hmm. into trees Four and times. boys mm -hmm. need that intentionality that relationship with their father to learn how to become a man That's so correct. can you just talk about the uh, the change in your heart of realizing that these boys need a father fortunately for me because of the age group al being the oldest so i would say how old was he when i repented and turned to jesus how old was Al? He, he, he wasn't up, he wasn't over 10, 12. Yeah. Right 10, in there. 10 or 10 12 years 10 or 11, old. 11, I think. And then okay. Jace would have been down there. Four years under him. Four years under him. Then two years under him would be a Willie. They were able to see at the right time for what the difference is between drunken heathens and sons of God. So, and amazingly, just in time, I've often looked back at it, and then I said, man, did I cut that thin? No telling where they what well, would happen right. to them. So, so to, well, I want people to know, just look, don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. You pray for your man, so you need to stay married. It's, 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 a, it's a brutal thing for the children. So try your best, whatever move and you it, need it to could be a woman that's went astray. The wife yeah. could yep, be absolutely. gone. Yes. And I've so seen it. We've ways. seen that, too. Yes. And where the man is so embarrassed, and he doesn't want to stay, and he's humiliated and all that. And uh, you just have to swallow your pride there. That's what you have to do because, you know, to become a Christian, we have to become ho uh, humble right. and do that. And it, But it is hard. And I'll say, for me, it's embarrassing. It was embarrassing, yeah. but what's more important, having a saved marriage or being embarrassed? You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you just got to say, I'm stepping out on, I believe God can change him. I think it's really encouraging as a mom, too, to think about, you know, being strong like that because you're modeling that to your children and that sets a legacy for the next generation to continue to fight for their marriage. I mean, you really have paved the way for your family. So thank you for yep. doing that. It's inspirational. One last question I have is the movie The Blind. It seems to have a lot of different messages incorporated in just those two words. The movie is set in a duck blind, and yet through your life, you were blind for right. many years mm -hmm. until you were able to find Christ. Can you just talk a little bit about that theme and how Christ just was totally able to transform that? I never killed anybody that I know of. So I wouldn't. I, I, I wouldn't hope in, that hap never I happened. I wasn't into. <laughs> I go to prisons now, and and I tell the guys that are there, you know, look, you can be under lock and key, but you can still be free. Hmm. And I point them to Jesus. So, uh, but 
all I would have to say is, it's a tough world out there, and when you make a commitment to Jesus, you better make it a strong one, because uh, the evil one, according to Jesus, is the father of murder. I, this is uh, John chapter 10. He's the father of murder and the father of lies. Well, if you just look around, you say, there's a lot of people getting killed for no reason. I mean, just it's just rampant people rioting, tearing up, shooting. And, you know, law enforcement is just under a, a, just a, a, a ongoing battle on the street and all. So the, 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 the text that comes to light, let's see right here. Yeah, watch. The acts of the sinful nature. Jesus said Satan told the people that were trying to kill him, fixing to kill him. He said, you know, your, your, your father is the devil. That's why you, you don't believe in me. What did I call you when you were drunk? Yeah, father of lies. Yeah. The devil. Mm -hmm. The acts of the sinful yeah. nature are obvious. Number one on the list, sexual immorality. I'm guilty as charged. Impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, drunkenness, envy, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, the Apostle Paul is talking, uh, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Hmm. But the fruit of the Spirit when you turn to God, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So what everyone needs to understand, I just hope you, you look at the movie and you say, this is what you don't want to be. And then you look at the movie a little later and you say, but you just put on your brakes and you put Jesus number one in your life and boy, was it a lot better. It's a relief. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course, there's the text there in Galatians 5. So we welcome any one of you out there that you're doing some struggle. Just, just stay cool and just remember, changing comes kind of difficult, but it's worth it. It's worth it. And you can find somebody that has gone through struggles and then come out on the good side and come out with you. And if you need to talk to those people, you know, I always say, they always say, talk to a preacher. And all. You don't have to. There's people all in every congregation that has went through terrible things maybe in their marriage, and yet they've found the right answer with God and, and they've worked it out. I'm sure anybody would tell you, this is what we did, and this is how it worked, and this this is some failures we had. This is the things that we did that led us to Christ, and other people helped us, and and all that. Because it's it's not a see if you just stay alone, it'll never change. It's an interesting read. Listen to this: the guy who wrote most of the New Testament. I think here's he's talking the Apostle Paul. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me faithful, appointing me to his service. Now listen to what kind of man he was. Even though I was once a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a violent man. You're like, mm. why in the world? So you look at the God we worship, he, he, he cut him some slack. So watch. God has shown me mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. Mm -hmm. So everybody at some point is there. We're, we're just showing you that you can climb out of it. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here's a trustworthy saying and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners mm -hmm. mm. of whom I'm the worst. So in a twisted sort of way, yeah. I said, well, if the Apostle Paul was allowed to write most of the New Testament and he was the worst <laughs> sinner, 
I've got hope. Yes. Uh, so yes. when you get to thinking you're the sorriest low down heathen there ever was, well, talk to Paul about it because God <laughs> forgave him and let him write most of the New Testament. And I'm like, what a God do we do have? He's, he's full of mercy for us. Absolutely. So he doesn't want to burn you. I mean, look at Paul. Yes. He, he let him write most of the New Testament. Yep. But uh, him being the worst, I said, well, I finally found somebody worse than I was. <laughs> yeah. so Paul, you, know, you know, Stephen would be in stone. Saul, he's over there holding his clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Allowed to people and families broken up. You just think about it. So he said, look, I'm the worst. Phil and Kay, it's just such an honor. Thank you so much for having us down to hey, no visit problem. with you and to talk about and promote the movie, which I'm sure is going to lead thousands to Christ as well. Hopefully. So I just want to encourage, Karen, our listeners to get out and support this movie. They can go to theblindmovie.com. It comes out on September 28th. And this is one that just needs to get out far and wide because the message is so powerful. Absolutely. So we expect to see all of our listeners on September yes. 28th in the theaters. Make sure you check it out. It's an amazing movie and you will not be disappointed.